Ben, for me, two years ago, one of the highlights was you unveiling on the very first links. You've come a long way since then, and, and uh, yesterday you launched Lynx KF41. Today, you've got it in a command post. Would you like to say a few words how you've come to develop this really unique vehicle, which can be re-rolled rapidly to meet different requirements? No, thank you, Christopher, and thanks again for coming uh, coming to our stand. So, uh, Lynx KF31, uh, we launched two years ago, uh, has the same modular uh, adaptable uh, uh, structure as the vehicle that you see here. And I guess I would say it's for, for the less demanding uh, customer in terms of survivability and payload. The Lynx KF41 is for the more demanding customer. Uh, uh, programs like the Land 400 Phase 3 program in Australia, Next Generation Combat Vehicle in the US, or the, uh, the Czech Republic with their IFV replacement uh, program. The vehicle has, uh, that you see behind us has over 18,000 kilos of free payload, 1140 horsepower engine giving it a, a unique uh, capability with the mechanical structure it has to adapt to, uh, to changing needs on the battlefield. We can do everything on this vehicle from uh, a light APC at 34 tonnes with 1140 horsepower, a good fun vehicle to drive around, right through to uh, uh, medium main battle tanks and, uh, and artillery systems on the vehicle. So it provides a really unrivalled uh, uh, capability in terms of the family of vehicles and variants that we can develop and really can be adapted as we've seen overnight from an infantry fighting vehicle to a command vehicle in only three and a half hours, which is quite unique, I think. And it also was very successful in the Czech retires recently, and that's one of the potential markets for you in the short term at least. Yeah, the, uh, we, we had the KF-31 on trial there, and we've also offered the KF-41 uh, uh, to the Czech Republic, particularly in both a, a medium main battle tank uh, uh, format, but also an infantry fighting vehicle format. We've had fantastic uh, feedback. The, the vehicle uh, performed very well on uh, trial last year, and we really look forward to the next steps in the, in the Czech Republic. We think we have a good offering here. We're fully committed. We have over a 1,000 Rheinmetall staff already in the Czech Republic. We have a huge automotive plant there right now, uh, so we're already a, a very strong partner to the, the, uh, the Czech government. I think that is also your very heavy voice you say in the upgrade of the Leopard and that includes a lot of transfer of technology and other, other key things. Yeah absolutely so if you take the Polish program we're very much used to, uh, uh, to partnering with our customers directly to, uh, to meet their needs but also the, the needs of the country so in the, in the Polish uh, Leopard upgrade uh, we're in production now the first vehicles will be finished uh, this year in the Polish production facility for the Leopard upgrade there so we're, we're very open to working with our customers to, uh, to meet their needs. You mentioned Australia, but for the uh, Australian reconnaissance, you have achieved a very high local content. I think through life you're talking about 70%, so you've already established a very good track record, because that's what countries want, they want transfer of technology and local job, and you seem to be achieving that. Yeah, it's a, it's a delicate balance to find that uh, that we uh, we stay strong in our home markets, uh, but also partner with uh, those governments and, and countries to to uh, develop a good industry in their locations as well. Uh, Australia is a, a shining light, as you can tell, I've got an Australian accent, I, I have my heart in that market as well, as in Germany, and uh, we've got a full military vehicle centre of excellence there, so it's not a build to print capability we have in Australia, but we're uh, an end-to-end -end business is established in the Australian market. Well, you won the man truck competition in Australia, you got the recce one, so it could well be third time lucky. I hope so. So, uh, yeah, things are going well in Australia, things are going very well in Germany as well, and uh, in the UK as well, uh, uh, with the, uh, the 7,500 trucks, uh, MIV recently announced, and, uh, and hopefully very soon we find a way forward on the Challenger Life Extension program in the next phase as well. So we're excited about the future at the moment. Looking at future vehicles, the user wants more volume, more payload, more protection. It seems in this vehicle you're actually meeting all those goals. Well, the adaptability is the key part of that. So uh, if you have a vehicle that uh, can defeat all threats on the battlefield, both from a survivability point of view, but also with the effectors on the platform, uh, I think we saw it on the ground combat vehicle uh, program in the past. The, the, uh, the weight of those platforms was, was really high. So we've cracked the, the problem in a different way, and adaptability is the key thing there, which we showed last night. So, uh, so we can change the, the vehicle uh, to be focused on sort of the urban terrain and, and heavy improvised explosive device and EFP threats, and we can modify it to the mounted combat operation configuration that you saw yesterday, and that can all be done in, in under four hours, and, and that's the unique thing that allows us to keep the weight of the vehicle within a, a reasonable level, that it's still transportable strategically for our customers. And this one's coming in at about 44 tonnes, but you've got a stretch potential of to 50, which really gives it a long life, which is that's what countries need these days. 
Absolutely. Well, it's not even a stretch potential. The vehicle is currently uh, in, on its test program and will be qualified at 50,000 kilos gross combination uh, uh, mass. Uh, we have variants of it in an APC variant at 34 tonnes with a rubber band track and 1140 horsepower. Um, we have a mounted combat operation configuration you saw yesterday um, uh, designed for peer on peer conflict with the Lance 2.0 turret at 44 tonnes and that same vehicle can then be upgraded to, into the 48 tonne range for, for very heavy urban uh, uh, combat in sort of the mega cities of the future. Uh, and even at the 48 tonne configuration which has extremely high protection level uh, against uh, uh, not just your standard um, uh, battlefield threats you might see in mounted combat operations but also then EFPs, rocket propelled grenades and that type of threat and we still have reserve payload in that configuration. So. Looking around the world, Mark, I think you've developed a very flexible vehicle which will meet the requirements of future customers for many years to come. No, thank you very much. Really appreciate that and, uh, and everyone coming to see us here at the show this week. So.